Sarah from Japan, and welcome back to another prophetic read-along. Today I'm going to be reading out of uh, Daniel chapter 8, and there's a lot jam-packed into this chapter, and that's why I haven't done it yet. I've been actually, uh, the Lord told me before I even started the book of Daniel to really pray about it, because there's a lot of stuff in there that needs to be known and understood. Okay, and I have to, you know, pray to get this all in the correct context. Okay, so, um, I've been absent because I've been trying to look things up, okay? Um, so, this this camera, I'm still on my iPhone because my computer is still broken. I have a new one coming this weekend, finally. But, uh, anyway, I'm going to read this, and I'll probably go back and add um, what I've learned, what I've researched, okay? Because I don't know if I can put everything into 15 minutes. So, anyway, um, I'm going to read from my my Bible here, my King James Bible, okay, and I'm going to read the, um, kind of the introduction, okay, kind of, uh, of the Bible part, you know, um, where it talks about, the, it's the commentary on Daniel chapter, uh, on 8 here, but it has the whole commentary here, but I'm just reading from chapter 8, okay, before I start the chapter, all right, so it says, um, the ram and the he goat, okay, chapter 8, this is Daniel's second vision, the ram symbolized the medo pigeon. I believe this is the third year he was in Bel under the reign of Belshazzar when he saw this, okay? So the ram symbolized the medo persian Empire, and the he-goat is the symbol of Greece, okay? The breaking of the he-goat's great horn refers to the untimely death of Alexander the Great in uh, 323 BC. Um, he died very young, he was 30, okay, when he was at the apex of his strength. This horn, so that's what it means, you know, like, You'll find out, you know, he was at the top of his strength, I mean, and he died very suddenly. This horn was replaced with four horns, okay, so his kingdom was divided into four parts, okay, that sprang up in all directions instead of just one horn. Four of Alexander's generals divided his kingdom among themselves, okay? Reference is also made to the little horn which became exceedingly great, okay? This little horn is uh, Antiochus IV, okay, or Antiochus Epiphanes. This guy, he was just wicked, and I mean, from the get-go, I mean, he killed his um, his namesake, his brother's son, as a little boy. He killed him when he was a little boy because he didn't want, you know, him getting in the way of getting the throne. Demonic guy. Anyway, so I will talk more about him later. But he was the eighth in, a lo in the long line of uh, the Seleucids who governed Syria in the capital city at Antioch. Antiochus Ep Epiphanes fulfilled every characteristic of the Antichrist because he was a truly wicked man. And if you want to learn more about that, you got to read the book of Maccabees. Okay? So the little horn is also um, the pi a picture of the Antichrist to come. So like, as it is written in the book of Ecclesiastics, okay, um, nothing new is under the sun. Basically, re history repeats itself. And there's a lot of things in the Bible that there's rehearsals and then there's the real thing, the real deal, like the feasts, okay, the Jewish feasts, there's a rehearsals for the real thing to come, and four of those feasts out of the seven, I believe, are fulfilled, and there's three to come, okay, so these are like rehearsals, and Satan, you know, not knowing, you know, exactly, he knows, he knows the Bible very, very well, I mean, that, how do you think he deceives people, I mean, he takes half-truths out of the Bible, and people believe that, and they're led astray because they hear something they like, and that re that is retained in the memory, and the rest is either gone or they don't listen to it at all. They just, you know. But anyway, um, so I believe that the uh, the devil puts up sets up a little antichrist for each generation. You know, we got Hitler, and we got Nero, and we got Ant this guy Antiochus. Okay, and he was truly evil. So anyway, um, the little horn is also a picture of the antichrist to come in the latter time. So the final antichrist is coming. Okay who will have great power and seek to make war on the saints. Okay, verse 24, and he is a man of peace. He destroys with peace, okay? So we'll find that out later. Okay, verse 24, he will also seek to destroy Christ, but he will be destroyed. Yay. All right, so let's look at chapter eight, chapter eight here then, okay? And let's read, okay? And I will probably come back later and uh, talk about more about Alexander. I would love to talk more about Alexander and this Antiochus guy, okay? So anyway, also current events too, if I have time. So this is not going to be just one read-along of chapter 8, okay? 
So, Daniel's vision of the ram and the goat, the time of the vision. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after that which was appeared unto me at the first. And I saw in a vision, and it came to pass when I saw that I was at Shushan in the palace, which is in the province of Elam, Iran, okay? And I saw in a vision, and I was by the river of Ulai. Okay, and that's one of the rivers in, in, uh, near Susa, Susa in uh, Iran, okay? The ram, meet of Persia. Then I lifted up my eyes, and I saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram, which had two horns, okay? And the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last, okay? I saw the ram pushing uh, westward and northward and southward. I'll be talking more about these directions later, okay? So that no beast might stand before him, neither was there any that could deliver him out of his hand. But he did according to his will, and became great, the he-goat, Grisha. All right. and, I, and as I was considering, behold, a he, he, sorry, a he goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground. That's how fast he was. He's swift. This is a swift conqueror. Okay. In Daniel's first vision, we hear about the leopard. That's the Grecian um, king, kingdom here. Okay. We got the uh, lion, which is Babylonia, and then we got the bear, which is Medo Persia, and then we've got the leopard, which is Grecia, which is Alexander the Great. Okay. He conquered very swiftly. Okay, and he was very strong. And as I was considering, behold, the he-goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground, and the goat had a notable, a notable horn between his eyes. Okay? A notable horn. A prominent horn here. War. Medo uh, Persia and Grecia. Okay? And he came to the ram that had two horns, which, had seen, which I had seen standing before the river, and ran unto, unto him in the fury of his power. And I saw him come close unto the ram, and he was moved with choler against him, and smote the ram, and brake his two horns, and there was no power in the ram to stand before him. Okay, so, but he cast him down to the ground, and stamped upon him. Okay, and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. So the, Mer the Medo-Persian Empire is about to be, you know, destroyed here, and it's going to be taken over by the Hellenistic uh, Alexander Kingdom. Okay, and they're going to change the way things are run in the Middle East here. Okay, the four horns. Therefore the he-goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken. When he was strong, when he was at his peak of power, his horn was broken. He died. Okay? And, and for it came up four notable, notable ones towards the four winds of the heaven. Okay? So his, his um, kingdom was divided up between the four generals. Okay? The little horn, Antichrist. Verse 9, And out of one of them came forth a little horn which waxed exceeding great towards the south and towards the east and towards the pleasant land, that's Judea. And it waxed great even to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and of the stars of the ground and stamped upon them. Notice this says, um, he uh, cast down some of the host and the stars of the, to the ground. Stars are like angels, aren't they? Now, Lucifer, when he rebelled against God, he took the third of the angels down, you know, down to earth. Well, he, well he, he didn't do that. He, sorry. He rebelled against God, and God cast a third of the angels out of heaven. Out of the third heaven. Okay? So, sorry, correction there. Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host. Even to the prince of the host. Okay? And by him the daily sacrifice was taken away. Okay? And the place of the sanctuary was cast down. And a host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto him, That's, That certain saint which spake, these are angels, I believe. These are not actually men saints, but I think these are angel saints. One angel said to another. So this is probably Gabriel speaking to uh, Michael. But, you know, read the scripture and study that for yourself, okay? I could be wrong, but that's what I think. All right. So, then I heard one saint speaking to another saint and said unto them, unto that certain saint which spake, How long shall be in the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of des desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And he said unto me, Un Unto two thousand three hundred days, and shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Now this, this really perplexed me because, you know, the tribulation is going to be seven years. But, if you notice, um, the Lord says that the that it'll be, the time will be cut short, less, you know, because if it weren't cut short, even the elect wouldn't survive, okay? Nobody would survive if the time wasn't cut short. So, um, seven years, according to the Gregorian calendar, is, mm, I think it was 2,554 days, 
believe that's it. Okay. And to the Hebraic calendar, the Jewish calendar, it is like 2,454 days, I think. Yes. So, 2,300 uh, uh, 2, days is, is like six and a half years. Okay? It's not quite seven years. Okay? So, that would make sense then, if, you know, the tribulation time. If the, the days were not cut short, the elect, even the elect would not survive. You know, it talks about that. I'm paraphrasing because I'm trying, I'm just playing off my memory here, but, you know, go and look that up, you know. So, um, anyway, so, and he said, Unto the 2,300 days shall the sanctuary be cleansed. The interpretation, angelic interpreters. And it came to pass when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning. Then, behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. Yes, and I heard a man's voice between the banks of Uli, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. So this, this vision of man is, is, is God, okay? It's probably the manifestation of Jesus Christ, I'm, I think, you know? The time of fulfillment. So he came near where I, was, where I stood, and, and he came, and I was afraid, and I fell upon my face. But he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, at, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. Now as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep. He fainted. <laughs> he fainted. <laughs> must have really got spooked there. <laughs> must have been so powerfully magnificent that, you know. Well, you know, um, John fell down as he was dead, as if he was dead when he saw, you know, Jesus in the book of Revelation, you know. Now, he's speaking with, now as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground, but he touched me and set me upright. And I said, and he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last, last end of the indignation, for, the, for at the time appointed the end shall be the ram, meet a Persia. I'm going to hurry up because I only have three minutes now. Uh, the ram which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of Media, Media and Persia. We know that, okay? So that's uh, Darius and Cyprus. And, uh, Cyrus, sorry, not Cyprus. Cyrus. The he goat, Grisha. And the rough goat is the king of Grisha, Alexander. And the great horn between, that is between his eyes is the first king, Alexander, okay? The four horns, Greece, Turkey, Syria, and Egypt. Now, that being broken, whereas four stood up for it, four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his power. The little horn, and in the latter times, latter time of their kingdom, the end days, when the transgressors are come to a full, when the transgressors, when the sinners have come to a full, the king of a fierce continence, a fierce face, stern face here, and understanding dark sen sentences, sinister sentences, shall stand up. The evil man is going to stand up. The little horn's power and war on the saints. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. Of course not. He's empowered by Satan. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. He's going to go after Israel. Pay attention to what's happening on March 20th, okay? His exaltation in war with Messiah. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace, by peace, shall destroy many. Look out for that peace agreement that's coming, okay? He shall also stand up against the prince of the princes, Jesus Christ, and he shall be broken without hand. The time of the vision. And the vision of the evening and the morning which is told is true. Wherefore, shut up thou the vision, because it's not time for that, okay? For it shall be for many days. It's for the latter times, okay? And I, Daniel, fainted. And with six certain days, it disturbed him. This vision disturbed him because, you know, he doesn't want to see the destruction of his people or anything like that. This is a truly disturbing vision. I mean, it made him sick. And I know of true saints that get sick to their stomach. They have visions that are so terrifying, you know, of what what is to come, you know. Or they feel what God feels. They feel, you know, like the sickness of God, you know, describes how he sees the lukewarm church. And, you know, he says... I wish that you were either cold or hot, but because you're lukewarm, I spew you out of my mouth. I want to throw you up. You make me want to vomit. You make me want to you make me sick, basically. And there are saints that are actually, you know, in tune, in, totally in tune with God, and they feel His feelings and they feel His His sickness, and they actually feel like throwing up. Okay, but anyway, um, it was six certain days. Afterwards, I rose up and did the king's business, and I was astonished at the vision, but none understood it. Okay, so like I said, this is not going to be contained within 15 minutes. I'm going to have to come back and go in depth more into this, okay? So, um, I've also been trying to study with my iPhone, the, um, looking things up on Google and like this, like looking at the screen going, because it's so small, you know, I'm, I can't wait to get my computer back. <laughs> all right, so I bless you all in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. I'm out. Love you. Bye.